So while the chicken and the potatoes are in, we're going to start on the next part of the lesson, which is preparing some of your evening meals. It's going to be a bolognese. We're also going to show you how to shift the bolognese into a chilli with a few secret, secret tips. So you can cook your bolognese with any kind of pasta, spinach pasta, egg pasta, whole wheat pasta, non-wheat based pastas, quinoa pasta, and another really good source of grain for pasta and bread is spelt. It's an ancient Roman grain and it's got less uh, allergy potential of modern, modern grown wheat. For the base of your bolognese sauce you're going to need celery, garlic, onions and a carrot. What's that called Sanj? Sofrito. Sofrito, it's delicious. Celery is an excellent fibrous vegetable. Medicinally it's uh, rumoured to be able to help with uh, things like high blood pressure. It's also very alkaline so it can help with conditions like gout. Once you've got one ingredient ready you can just get that into a bowl. Okay that's eight cloves of garlic in there. We'll do enough bolognese for four people so it's two cloves per person. Now the carrot. Get those bits into the, the stock pot, ready to go. Your carrot needs to be chopped pretty small. So one good way of doing that is as follows. You don't want a carrot to roll around, so you need to make a base for it. That way it's not going to roll anywhere. And then you need to slice it lengthways. Watch your fingers on this. Okay, maybe three or four times. Then you get it back on its base. And again, so you're making long little carrot sticks like that, okay? And then you take them like that, and then you make carrot cubes because you don't really want to be able to see the carrot in the sauce. And like this, it will dissolve slightly with the celery and just leave a lovely flavour in that sauce. That goes into the bowl. Obviously we're using all organic ingredients so we, there was no need to peel the carrot because we didn't need to get ready, rid of any of the nasty pesticides, herbicides and fungicides that go on to non-organic vegetables. A lot of the nutrients are also directly beneath the skin so to keep, keep the high amounts of nutrients in the food you, you shouldn't peel them. Same with any other vegetable really. Onions are good. One is they're a good source of carbohydrates so there's the same amount of carbs in an onion as there is in an apple. They're also very good because they contain plenty of natural anti-inflammatories. So they have something in them called coercitin, which takes inflammation away from cells. So anything that can do that on a recovery day is, is a welcome part of your diet. On average, we want maybe a tablespoon of oil per person. Like I said, it's a recovery day, so you don't need to be crazy about limiting this and that. You can be a little bit liberal with you know, your energy dense, uh, nutrient dense calorie foods. Here's a little tip, you can, you can leave a little bit of onion in the oil and you know when the oil's ready for the rest of the ingredients because it will just start sizzling like that. So in go the rest of those ingredients that you chopped. Lovely. some good colours in there and what you want to do is you cook these until they're just slightly softened and then you add the meat so what we've got here is some nice farmers market organic grass fed beef now the reason that's better for you is opposed to grain fed beef the ratio of omega 6 to omega 3 in grain fed beef is 20 to 1 which means it's 20 times worse for you in terms of its uh, inflammatory um, properties. This is, this is about 3 to 1. Cows are meant to eat grass, they're not meant to eat cornflakes, which is what they get fed to make them fat quickly. So it's worth taking a trip down to the farmer's market so you end up with better nutrients going into your body. Right, I'm turning that up now. Just keep stirring that as it's cooking so that you get all the, all the minced meats browned off nicely before the tomatoes and uh, seasoning goes in. But that's pretty much browned off now, so we're happy with that. 
and now I need to chuck in the tomatoes. Now you can use fresh ones if you want, but these are nice tinned organic ones. And if you're sort of a member of one of those macro shops, you know, a, whole, a wholesaler, then getting your organic ingredients is quite cost effective. I'm just rinsing out those uh, tins there to get the remaining bits of the tomato goodness. And of course you'll be rinsing them out and recycling them. Okay, so now we're going to stir that all in. And they're whole tomatoes, so what you need to do is get a knife. And then you can just get the wooden spoon in there and use that as a little mini chopping board. And then you can get pre-chopped ones, but I quite like the sort of difference in texture. And then just stir that all in. Okay, what you want to do now is add a generous amount of this nice rock mineral salt. And finally, just add some seasoning. This is just a mixed Italian herbs. It's quite nice to use fresh herbs as well, but if I'm using fresh herbs, I'll uh, put those in just before you serve. 